Arts and Communication Magnet Academy. In the fall of 2021, ACMA will open a new campus with facilities designed to support artists and students in a way we've never seen before. Before that 2021 opening, however, we have lots to do. Planning, preparing, moving, and construction. And as with any big project, it's important to have accurate information and good perspective on what's coming. So I want to take a chance to answer some of the questions we've heard, look inside the plans for the new building, and see some of what's coming to our new space. I've been asked why ACMA was last on the bond, and the truth is that schools were built to address needs and capacity. As some parts of our attendance area grew, we needed to have a place for those students. Timberland Middle School was built as a swing school, a smart investment that provided a home for the three elementary schools that were reconstructed as part of the bond. With great facilities, music rooms, kilns, a black box theater, and nice classrooms and labs, Timberland is able to provide ACMA with a home for the two years of construction in which our programs will not suffer because of temporary or inadequate space. Some have asked about the budget and if it's changed. It has, rising from $28.3 million to $39 million. Some wondered, how do we design the rooms? Over the past year, architects and our project manager met with a whole staff, and then conducted a series of meetings with departments and teachers from programs with specialized needs. Building a ceramics room or a dance studio is different than building a classroom, and teachers suggested details that should be considered as the new spaces were built. One example would be our photography room. Few schools today are built with dark rooms, but just as we have one now, we'll have one in our new building. And to make sure it meets the needs of our students and program, the teacher collaborated with architects and our project manager throughout the fall and winter. I've heard some questions about furniture and equipment, and what will be new in the new building. Our FF&E budget includes new classroom furniture, a new piano for our expanded music rooms, and lots of storage. Some items it made sense to keep. We have two working kilns, and both common sense and fiscal responsibility suggest that we keep them for the new building. While our ceramics pug mill is old and wouldn't make the move back, we'll get a new pug mill, but use our existing kilns. The new building will look and feel much different than our existing one. ACMA is currently housed in the building built as 1949 CE Mason Elementary. Added to the original structure are six portables, all of them showing their age. In addition, since campus was built as an elementary school, since ACMA opened in 1992, we've had to make do with some facilities that don't quite fit our needs. Three of our portables, for example, are divided in half to make classrooms. These rooms are only about 600 square feet, a far cry from the average of closer to 960 square feet in our new building. Our cafeteria is a distinctive feature on campus, the Quonset Hut. With a capacity of just about 100 students and no running water, it simply is not up to the job of providing students what they need. In the new building, we'll see a commons area with a working kitchen and seating for far, far more students. Dance is currently being taught in three areas a converted set of elementary classrooms on the south end of campus, and two portables on the far north. This means that dancers have to go outside to get to most of their classes, an issue both in terms of safety and weather. Instrumental music lives in our last portable, a low ceiling structure with the acoustics of a portable. This program will see the most profound change as we move into the new campus. That new campus is two stories, the lower floor on the left and the upper floor on the right. Music will occupy a large area adjacent to the existing Performing Arts Center. With two ensemble rooms, practice rooms, and a recording studio, this addition gives our students a facility that matches their professionalism. Dance is upstairs, in three large studios surrounded with sound, bars, music, and custom floors designed with the help of the dance department. All three studios will be together, and all will be inside the main building. Just south of the dance studios are two changing rooms with lockers to hold dance bags and student gear while kids are participating in personal fitness or dance. No longer will students have to change in the bathrooms. Speaking of bathrooms, both upstairs and downstairs, they're gender neutral bathrooms, complementing the male and female bathroom sets. Downstairs, two hallways will be built into the existing PAC. This means that students will not have to go outside to go back into the pack, an improvement both in safety and comfort. And upstairs, we see the addition of two study areas. These are collaboration spaces and will provide both areas where students can work together and a gallery space where they can display student art, a big deal here at ACMA. Looking quantitatively at our current CE Mason building and the new campus shows that we keep the usual facilities, painting, drawing, and the like, with a major addition of the added music space. 
In addition, we add several teaching spaces in the new building, including two middle school science labs. We've never had these at ACMA, where middle school science is currently being taught in English rooms and Spanish rooms and wherever we can fit it. Bringing these facilities to ACMA is important. Students at our school will now have science labs grades 6 through 12. We're also adding a design lab, perfect for animation, object design, and programs beyond painting, drawing, and sculpture. But that's quantitative, and one of the biggest improvements comes in terms of quality. Our film studio, for example, which is currently housed in part of a portable, will grow into a screening area with editing bays around the perimeter, two adjacent film studios, and a third studio storage area. Our photography room will include a dark room, as it does now, but where our current facility has that dark room built into an existing classroom, leaving the classroom space too small for all but the smallest classes, the new building will see an expanded classroom that will mean our photography program won't have to compromise classroom space for the dark room. And that design lab off the commons has space not only for technology, a wall of computers for animation and design, but also water, a 3D printer, and space for tools on the opposite wall. This lab provides flexible space that will encourage our students to think creatively. One of the concerns some have had is how we're gonna fit our current programs beyond the classrooms into the space. Gallery space, performance space, those matter much to our school. Walk down the current hallways and you'll see artwork that could be hanging in a museum. We wanna make sure that we have places where students can continue to display their work. Upstairs, two of those locations are in the north and south collaboration areas outside the classrooms. High traffic and high visibility, these are natural locations for gallery space. So too is the wall outside the 2D and 3D art rooms. Just off the commons, this central location puts student art front and center for anyone visiting campus. And that commons area is a far cry from our current Quonset hut. On the north edge of the commons, a stage offers a venue for open mic nights, quartets, quintets, modestly scaled performances. It also serves as a nice reminder that ACMA is an art school and a place that values giving students the opportunity to perform. Along with beauty and opportunity, we have need for function. For some, that includes lockers. While ACMA has never had lockers, and some regard them as an expensive, underused, and potentially safety hazard, with students stowing things they shouldn't have at school, others see them as something they want in the new building. I've been a principal or assistant principal in five buildings, and four of them didn't have lockers. As long as we had adequate storage in the classrooms and labs, this didn't seem to be a problem. But others point out that students have a lot to carry, including backpacks and, at an art school like ours, instruments, dance bags, and art supplies. And we know that many of these art-specific items wouldn't fit into a standard locker, and we're working to add storage in our music, dance, and art rooms. We also hear our students, specifically our middle school students, who are interested in trying lockers, and we've identified a few spots near the commons that would work to install them. The space just north and south of the bathrooms near the commons and just outside the art rooms could house lockers. And we could also look to install lockers in the science hallway which could bring the capacity downstairs up close to 200. Taking away gallery space upstairs could make room for more lockers and could be a decision that we make after we've experienced what lockers are like in our temporary home at Timberland. Locker conversations are ongoing and perhaps a balance of art and function can help keep our ACMA spirit and help provide the storage we need. But with or without these, the discussion of backpack weight should be something we all address. The new building is designed to give ACMA the facilities that will elevate programs for the next 75 years, with more space, more specialized spaces, thoughtful safety features, and an update from 1949 to the future. Walking counterclockwise around campus, you can see a safer, welcoming entry, a bump out to make studios and dance rooms larger and lighter, two stories of classrooms, up-to-date middle and high school science labs that exit onto a hardscape in the back of the school in case they want to take experiments outside, and a well-lit commons area where students can gather surrounded by art. And while this isn't a final drawing, you can see that outside will also add a paved walking path, room for a student garden, ample seating for students, a raised platform where we could stage performances, and the single basketball hoop we've always had, though the new building will have it backed by a mural wall, not by breakable classroom windows. Inside and out, ACMA is improving. With new and better classrooms, labs, and art facilities, it's a campus looking forward, not back, and it'll be good for students. <laughs>